To start living, you first have to survive, meaning to make sure your essential needs are met. October 16th marks World Food Day. Good afternoon, it's Monday 16th. This is Henry Keane and yet another episode of our daily wrap-up bringing hard truth in easy terms for the rest of free world directly from Ukraine. Ukraine is one of the world's largest producers of agricultural products and traditionally exports food with an affordable price tag. With its special responsibility as a permanent member of the Security Council, Russia mocks the United Nations every day. It continues its illegal and immoral invasion of Ukraine. Just as Russia mocks the international community with its cynical games on food security that leave millions hungry, promising grain to vulnerable nations yet at the same time destroying Ukrainian grain silos along the Black Sea coast. Our country not only generates profit from the export of agricultural products, but also makes quite a significant contribution to maintaining global food security. Ukraine knows what it is like to be a harsh need, and so Ukrainian food is supplied to those in need around the world as part of humanitarian programs. Russian military aggression is inflicting massive damage to the agricultural sector, undermining Ukraine's ability to supply affordable food to foreign markets. Russia blocks the seaports of Ukraine, attacks the port infrastructure, deliberately destroys granaries to prevent Ukrainian exports, no matter if nations in urgent need are balancing on the verge of famine. No less, Moscow uses, or rather abuses, the fact of world hunger as a weapon to achieve its political goals. Despite the withdrawal of Russia from the grain deals and Russian sea blockade, Ukraine is making significant and successful efforts to continue supplying food to foreign markets. Together with partners, it has established a new sea corridor and is developing land logistics. The hard truth in easy terms on the theme is, I know we are at war and there should be no sentiments, but fighting a war and inflicting a terror are two major controversial values that distinguish generally humane approaches to life and a particularly inhumane one. That said, can you imagine that brave new world if Russia wins? On October 13th, the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe adopted a resolution recognizing what was obvious here in Ukraine – since 2014, when Russia annexed Crimea. Now it is internationally official. The Council of Europe called Russia a dictatorship and urged member countries not to recognize Putin a legitimate president after the end of this current presidential term in spring 2024. The Putin regime has usurped power and has invariably ruled Russia for more than 20 years. During this time, the real political opposition was literally, without any exaggeration, physically destroyed in Russia, and civil rights were significantly limited to a level that allows people to exist until they remain silent. Having destroyed all these safeguards within Russia, Putin at his own discretion starts bloody wars and when things are seriously south, his country gets isolated and his troops are losing on the ground. No matter how terrible Russian terror is, Putin resorts to even a greater terror and threatens the world with a nuclear catastrophe. And we, the victims of aggression, as martyrs, we will go to heaven while they will just die because they will not even have time to repent. So what do we as well do about all that? Well, it is, again, quite obvious if you dare to come over here and look at things from Ukraine's perspective. Without removing the dictator, nothing changes. The usurped criminal dictatorial regime is in power in the Kremlin and Russia stays Putin's Russia until things are like that and it will continue its aggression and always was, is and will be a Pandora's box, a constant source of unpredictable terrible threats to its own Russian nation and to the world. The refusal to recognize Putin's legitimacy after 2024 is a powerful signal from the international community. The dictatorships are unacceptable. In the modern world, the Passé supported the decision to arrest Putin based on the warrant of the International Criminal Court. Crime and criminals against humanity deserve punishment, and humanity deserves that even more.
The U.S. mission to the United Nations reported that the North Korean regime supplied more than a thousand containers of military equipment and ammunition to Russia. Well, no surprise. And no surprise, North Korean military equipment and ammunition supplied to Russia will be used against Ukraine. This is how usurp Russian Tsar protracts the war without seeking any peace, of course. We condemn the North Korea for providing Russia with this military equipment, which will be used to attack Ukrainian cities and kill Ukrainian civilians and further Russia's illegitimate war. We will continue to monitor for any additional North Korean arms shipment to Russia. John Kirby, coordinator for strategic communication of the National Security Council of the U.S. These supplies are sent, of course, right on contrary to the U.N. Security Council resolution and poses serious threats to peace and stability. Of course, since this ammunition will be used to kill us here in Ukraine. Moscow blatantly ignores its international obligations. Again, which is very usual and absolutely comes not as any surprise, Russian ways are nothing but terror. So terror, no matter North Korean or Hamas origin, is Russian choice when it comes to whom to cling to for more ammunition. What is it of greatest danger to the world? In exchange for Pyongyang's support, Moscow can help North Korea develop its missile program and other more or less modern technologies that will pose a threat to regional security in the whole Asia-Pacific region. The United States and South Korea have already announced sanctions and other measures against the deepening of military ties between North Korea and Russia. Today is 600 days. Since Ukraine is successfully opposing Russian criminal full-scale aggression against Ukraine and the civilized world, would someone explain it to me in easy terms why the world that at least tries to be more or less civilized and free just can't grasp it? Once, One thing, all during these 600 days, there is no way any sanctions will help. There is no way Putin or North Korea are made to be any more humane. Not in extra 600 days, nor in 1,200 days or ever, simply because they are not humane and are inhumane and always will remain so. So I guess you just can't call yourself a defender of democracy and human rights when someone openly craps onto it and you, all you do is sanction them for it. It was Henry Keane on UATV English, hoping to give you the hard truth in easy enough terms. On our daily wrap-up today, comment, like and subscribe. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Your opinion matters a lot to us. Stay safe and tune for more. See you very soon.